Hello everyone and welcome back to the fourth and final edition of the Commander 2019 unboxing sets. If you haven't seen my videos of the other ones, um, on the other videos I have the unboxings of all the other three. Today we're going to be doing Mystic Intellect. Uh, Mystic Intellect's Commander is Sabine the Chronoclasm. I think that's how you say that. Uh, bear with me guys, my English is very bad. Um, so we have two red, white, blue, prevent all damage that would be dealt to Savine whenever you cast your first instant or sorcery spell from your graveyard each turn. Copy that spell. You may choose new targets for the copy. So this is very interesting. Um, just prevent all damage. So that means it doesn't have to be just combat damage, just any damage that's dealt to him, you can prevent it. So that's interesting. That uh, sounds like a combo in itself. Hmm, very interesting. So, anyways, uh, these are uh, a commander. Uh, this is a, uh, let's reset mentally. Uh, it's very early in the morning, so bear with me. Uh, these right here are a wonderful product put out by Wizards. Um, it's just completely sealed commander decks. They're absolutely wonderful. I love them. I usually try them up every year. Uh, they're very competitive straight out of the box. I really like them. So, let's get rid of the trash. These are here. Just stretch this. Pop that water right out. Very pretty foiling looks nice on this. Very interesting. Okay. I like it. Okay. So, whenever you open your box, you're going to see these little uh, papers. They're basically just like a little pamphlet telling you about the deck, some of the alternate commanders that you can use on the deck. Um, that's, a, that's a good read uh, on, your, on your free time whenever you want. Uh, but today, we're going to be taking a close look at the deck. That's what we're here for. Crack this bad boy open. Which, uh, which commander do you all plan on buying? In the comments below, let me know. Uh, once again, I always love these little pieces of paper talking about popular magic format, standard booster draft commander. Uh, it doesn't mention anything about modern, which happens to be probably the number one format for magic the Gathering. Okay, so we have our initial commander that we've already went over. Um, this one right here, I think a lot of people are actually switching to. Uh, they prefer this one over the, uh, the other ones. It's, uh, Asha of the infinite. Uh, it's red, white, and blue for two, uh, for a three, three with prowess. You may look at the top card of your library any time. You may cast the top card of your library if it's a non-creature, non-land, and you may cast it as though it had flash. So that's really interesting. I can see why uh, this right here would be a good, good commander. Sorry, I just, uh, just woke up. I really wanted to do this video for you guys. I really like the art on this. Uh, I think this is uh, going to be really powerful. It sounds like a, a combo thing. So non-creature, non-land. So in theory, if you had the mana and you're running to divine top, you just top, 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 and just keep going. All right. Pramicon, the Sky Rampart. It's uh, red, white, and blue for a 1-5 flying defender. Uh, when it enters the battlefield, choose left or right. Each player may attack only the nearest opponent in the chosen direction and planeswalkers controlled by that opponent. Very interesting. I really like this card and I really want to build around it. Uh, I've been making the joke recently to uh, friends and family. I want to build this deck and call it the Trump. Uh, and the reason for it is because uh, Trump wants to build a wall and I run a bunch of taxes in it. You know, hey, you have to pay two to draw a card, you pay two or I draw a card. You know, basically run a bunch of those. Uh, I thought it'd be funny. Okay, uh, here's uh, some of my favorite parts of the deck. These are the tokens. Uh, we got Spirit, Spirit. We have a Flying Pegasus. That art on that Flying Pegasus, though, looks really good. We have our Drake. We have three of those, looks like. We have some treasure tokens. And on the back, we have a human. A human? 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 Wow, see, that's a lot of humans. So I guess we're planning on making a lot of humans in this deck. All right, first off, we have Cliffside Rescuer. It's a two drop for a two two with vigilance. You can sacrifice it, and target permanent you control gains protection from each of your opponents until the end of turn. Hmm. Leadership Vacuum for three mana instant speed. Target player turns each commander they control from the battlefield to the command zone. Draw a card. Hmm. 
This card I really like, the Bloodthirsty Blade. It's a two drop with equipped creature, gets plus two O and is goaded. You can pay one to attach it to target creature and opponent controls. Activate this ability only any time you can cast the sorcery. We have Scar Tiller, or Scare Tiller. Four drop for a one four, whenever it becomes tap, choose one. You may put a land from your hand onto the battlefield or return land from your graveyard to the battlefield. I'm sorry about that. My puppy, Mushu! Mushu! Now, you can hear my puppy in the other room. He's playing. Uh, I really like this card because you don't necessarily have to attack. It's just whenever it uh, becomes tapped by maybe a spell, an ability, maybe an artifact with a tap ability. Um, it's really nice. Uh, then we have Ghostly Prism. Uh, Ghostly Prism is uh, really nice. This is what I was talking about, like paying those taxes and stuff. Uh, creatures can't attack you unless their controller pays two for each creature they control that's attacking. Um, this is a really good card. I'm surprised they didn't put propaganda. Hmm. Here, sorry, uh, which is exactly the same card except for it is blue instead of white. Okay, uh, this is a really good popper reprint. Uh, Prismatic Strands 3 for prevent all damage that sources of the color of your choice would deal this turn. Flashback tap an untapped white creature you control. And I absolutely love the art that's going through here. I think that's great. Um, this can be used in more than one way if you think about it. If you're playing in a pod, maybe your elf guy over here is swinging wide at this one. And you know, you're just like, all right, uh, prevent all green damage. Uh, you prevent the elves, but they get the sub. There's lots of things you can do with this. Um, and I love the flashback. It's just tap an untapped white creature you control. I really like that. Purify the Grave, uh, one drop instant speed, exile target card from a graveyard, and flashback for one white. Not bad. Ray of Distortion, four drop, destroy target artifact or enchantment, flashback for six. Hmm. Uh, I like the flashback. I hate that it costs so much. But there are things that are cheaper that I think you can pay like one white and then another color to flashback. But um, I think that's just out of our colors. But other than that card right there, I feel like there's cheaper alternatives. Draw two cards with Jumpstart. This is a Chemister's Insight. This is a recent card that just got printed uh, in Standard. Interesting to see it uh, come back. Jumpstart, I think, is going to be good for, uh, for this deck. Four for deep analysis. Target player draws two cards. Flashback is pay two and pay three life. Factor fiction. This is a good card. Uh, four drop instant speed. Reveal the top five cards of your library. An opponent separates those cards into two piles. Put one pile into your hand and the other into your graveyard. Fervent denial. Five drop counter target spell. Ugh. Flashback is five and two uh, counter target spell. This is a lot of mana to cast or just to counter spell. I understand it has to have the flashback. Oh, man, that's rough. Mystic Retrieval. Pay four. Return target instant or sorcery card from your graveyard to your hand with flashback three. Una's Grace. I really like the art, art on this card. Three drop for instant speed. Target player draws a card with retrace. You may cast this card from your graveyard by discarding a land and in addition to paying its other cost. Runic Reputation. Repetition. Three for sorcery. Return target exiled card with flashback you own to your hand. That's very interesting. My dog's getting into stuff. Uh, three for an enchantment. Whenever you cast a spell from your graveyard, draw a card. That's not bad. That'll, that'll see playing this. Uh, two drop for an instant. Draw a card with flashback for three. Think twice. Burning Vengeance. Three for an enchantment. Whenever you cast a spell from your graveyard, Burning Vengeance does two damage to any target. Okay. 
Draw two cards, discard, then discard a card at random. Flashback is two and a blue. That's a disparate ravings for two. Uh, here's Faithless Looting with the uh, the promo art. It's one mana for uh, sorcery. Draw two cards and discard two cards with flashback. Gutter Snipe. Three for a 2-2 two -two whenever you cast an answer and sorcery spell. Gutter Snipe deals two damage to each opponent. Rolling Timblor. Three for a sorcery. Deals two damage to each creature without flying. Uh, with flashback for six. That's not a bad card. Crackling Drake is really good. Uh, four mana for a star four flying. Its power is equal to the number of instant sorcery cards in your graveyard. Or you own in exile and in your graveyard. Uh, so this is really good just in case you get Pajuka Bog. Uh, enters the battlefield draw card. Farm. Three mana, instant speed, destroy target attacking or blocking creature. Then it has aftermath. Uh, withdraw two cards, then discard two cards for three. Hmm. Armilla Spear. Armillary Spear. It's a two drop artifact with pay two, sacrifice Armillary Spear. Search your library for up to two basic lands. Uh, reveal them, put them, put them in your hand, then shuffle your library. There's some good ramp. Uh, there's a disappointment. I uh, really wish we had just got the, the lockets. Um, pay three, you can tap to add a white or a blue, or you can pay four white, four blue, or any combination of those. Sacrifice it and draw two cards. Burnished Heart, three for a two-two. Pay three, sacrifice Burnished Heart. Search your library for up to two basic land cards. Put them onto the battlefield tap, then shuffle your library. Now, I really like the art on this one. I think this one's a new one. Uh, pay two mana, instant speed, cast this spell only during combat. Your opponents can't cast spells this turn. End the combat phase. So basically, it's a nice fog, and it makes it really like, hey, nothing else is going on this turn. Just doubt. Uh, Savine's Reclamation. Three for return target permanent card with converted mana cost. Three or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. If this spell was... Cast from your graveyard, you may copy this spell and may choose a new target for the copy. Flashback is five. <laughs> Thalia's Guest Caller. Three mana for a 3-1 with lifelink. Whenever you cast a spell from your graveyard, create a 1-1 one, one white spirit creature token with flying. Sacrifice the spirit. Thalia's Caller gains indestructible till the end of turn. Mass Diminish. It's a two draw for sorcery until your next turn. Creatures, target, player, controls have base power and toughness 1-1 one, one, with flashback for four. I really wish that this was a instant instead of sorcery. I feel like uh, that'd be better, which I mean, until your next turn, that's still not bad, but you never know what can happen. Wall of Stolen Identity. This would be a good one for that uh, deck I was talking about. Four drop for a zero zero. You may have wall of stolen identity in your battlefield as a copy of any creature on the battlefield, except it's a wall in addition to its other types and has defender. When you do, tap the copied creature and it doesn't untap during its controller's untap step for as long as you control wall of stolen identity. Gotta love dragons. This is a backdraft hell kite for five for four four. Flying, whenever it attacks, each instant and sorcery card in your graveyard gains flashback until the end of turn. The flashback's cost is equal to its mana cost. Yeah, that's not bad. Dockside Extortionist. Two mana for a 1-2. Whenever it enters the battlefield, create X treasure tokens, where X is the number of artifacts and enchantments your opponents control. Now, this would be a good one that you could put in a Grinko deck, and this one might be good for here, too. Ignite the future for four drop sorcery exile the top three cards of your library until the end of your next turn You may play those cards if this spell was cast from your graveyard You may play cards this way without paying their mana cost flashback is eight All right, this card I really like this is another legendary that we're getting um, the back art on this is really really pretty um, See if you can get a closer look it's just really, really pretty back art there. Um, so for a four mana, for you get a three, three, first strike. Whenever it dies, exile it and return battlefield all artifacts and creature cards in your graveyard that were put there from the battlefield this turn. 
So this is really nice. I like this card for its ability. I feel like if there was a way to keep it coming back, this would be great. Uh, here's a sleeper. Empowered Auto Generator. Four mana. Enters the battlefield tap. Put a charge counter on Empowered Engine Generator. Add X mana of any one color where X is the number of charge counters on it. So, at first, this is kind of, uh, it's really bad because you're only tapping it for one, and then two, and three. Uh, but, once it gets up there, this becomes really good if it just doesn't get messed with. Then we have Pristine Angel. It's a six drop angel with flying for a 4-4. Four, four. As long as it is untapped, it has protection from artifacts and from all colors. Whenever you cast a spell, you may untap Pristine Angel. Sun Titan. We have a 6 drop 6-6 six, six Vigilance. When it enters the battlefield or attacks, you may return target permanent with converted mana and cost 3 or less from your graveyard to the battlefield. This is a good card to have. Even if I don't play this deck, this card might go on something else. Uh, and this is probably one of my personal favorite cards of all time. Uh, Clever Impersonator is a 4 drop for a 0-0. Zero, zero. You, you may have Clever Impersonator in his battlefield as a copy of any non-land permanent on the battlefield. So Planeswalkers, enchantments, artifacts, you name it, it's coming in. It's going to be doing really good stuff. Then we have Ral Zarek, uh, four drop for four loyalty, plus one tap target permanent, then untap another target permanent, minus two, does three damage to any target, minus seven, flip five coins, take an extra turn after this one for each coin that comes up heads. Uh, that last ability is pretty busted. Divine Reckoning. Four mana. Each player chooses a creature they control. Destroy the rest. Oh, oh. oh that's rough. With flashback for seven. Dusk to Dawn. Four mana. Destroy all creatures power three or greater. Then Aftermath. Return all creature cards with power two or less from your graveyard to your hand. Hmm. Then we have Increased Devotion. Five mana, create five 1-1 one, one white human creature tokens. If this spell is cast from a graveyard, create ten of those tokens instead. Flashback for seven, eight, nine. Wow. Uh, now here's the thing that really kind of upsets me. Um, I've, uh, I really like the tokens in this set. Okay, so for this one, um, you create five one one humans if uh, if you cast a flashback you create ten so in this deck they gave us tons of human tokens which is great because that's what we would need we need lots of human tokens for it but in the primal genesis or the the token one um, there's a worm that whenever it does combat damage you make a copy of that worm but we couldn't get one of those tokens but in this deck we can get all ten for our uh, for our increased devotion. Little things like that. Storm Herd. It's a 10 drop. Create X11 white Pegasus creature tokens with flying, where X is your life total. So if you can get this up there pretty quick, you're going to get a lot of Pegasus. Zatalpa, Primal Dawn. This is a 8 drop with 4 8 power and toughness with flying, double strike, vigilance, trample, and indestructible. Uh, this is a pretty good card. Jace's Sanctum, 4 drop, instant and sorcery spells you cast cost 1 less to cast. Whenever you cast an instant sorcery, scry 1. River Kelpie, it's a 5 mana for a 3-3 three, three. when it enters, the, whenever he or another permanent enters the battlefield from a graveyard, draw a card. Whenever a player casts a spell from a graveyard, draw a card. And then persists. So, here's bad food from a graveyard. So, that's pretty neat because uh, that allows you to draw stuff from your opponents whenever they cast stuff from the graveyard, so that's not bad. Torrand, Sky Summoner, 4 drop for a 2 2. Whenever you cast an instant sorcery spell, create a 2 2 blue drake creature token with flying. It's not bad. That's really good and standard. Devil's Play, 1 and X. Devil's Play deals X damage to any target. Flashback is 3 and X. Hmm. Increasing Vengeance, 
uh, two red, copy target and sorcery spell you control. If that spell was cast from a graveyard, copy that spell twice instead. You may choose new targets for the copies. <sighs> Flashback is five mana. Magma Quake, this is a good card. Uh, two and X, Magma Quake deals X damage divided or to each creature without flying and each planeswalker. Pristine Skywise, it's a two and four for a six four flying whenever you cast a non-creature spell, untap Skywise. It gains protection from the color of your choice until the end of turn. Refuse, four mana for instant refuse. Deals damage to target spells controller equal to the spells converted mana cost. Cooperate. Two with ma aftermath instant speed. Copy target instant and sorcery spell. You may choose new targets for the copy. Um, and then we have Exotic Orchard. This comes in all the uh, commander precons. Prairie Stream. This is uh, one of our lands that we can fetch for whenever we have a land that says you can set your out for planes or land. This one enters the battlefield tapped unless you control two or more basics. Uh, commander Spear. It's always good to have in Commander. Three drop. Uh, add one man of any color to your commander's identity and sacrifice it to draw a card. Is it Locket? Uh, three mana. Add a red or a blue or you can tap four blue or four red, sack it, and draw two cards. Soul Ring. Probably the number one card played in Commander, period. Then we have some of our basic lands. Uh, these are the planes, a lot of planes. Uh, then we have some islands, of course. This is where we speed through, because uh, everybody knows what the islands do. Uh, then we have mountains. Okay, then we have ash barons. This is also in each of the commander precons. This did have a nice hefty price tag on it for a while, just because we could only get it in the commander precon. Um, Popper loves this card. It's a good pickup for there. Uh, Azorius Chancery. This is uh, one of the Ender's Battlefield tapped and it's a bounce land. So whenever Ender's Battlefield, you have to return a land to your hand. Uh, same thing with this one, but it's red white. Then we have Boris Guild Gates. Uh, Command Tower. This is probably the second most played card in all Commander. Then we have our Fetch Lands with Evolving Wild. Uh, we have Highland Lake, and it's about a at red or blue. Is it Bulwarks? This is another one of those bounce lands for the red and blue. Is it Guildgate? Uh, we have red landscaping, and it's about tapped. You can tap for colors, or you can pay two. Sack it, search library for two basic lands that type uh, share a land type. Put them on the battlefield tapped, then shuffle your library. Mystic. Monastery. Um, I don't know if you've noticed, but in one of our commanders, this is actually the background art. So our guy is actually down here in the corner uh, practicing. There's the little school behind it. Stone Quarry. There's about for tapped at a red or blue white. Um, then we have our lifeline, Swiftwater Cliffs. There's about for tapped. Uh, you gain one life. Temple of the False Gods. Uh, you can tap it for two colorless. Uh, activate this ability only if you control five or more lands. Terramorphic Expanse. Uh, this is basically another Evolving Wilds. Tranquil Quove. Quove? Quove? Cove. Uh, you enter the battlefield, you gain a life. And we have Windscarred Crag. Enter the battlefield, you gain a life. So, uh, that is your... Where's the deck box for this? Uh, Mystic Intellect. This is Mystic Intellect. This is your one of your four Commander 2019s. Uh, that brings us to the conclusion of the unboxings of all of this set. I hope you guys really appreciate this, and I'm sorry for all the uh, mispronunciation, all the yawning and everything. This is totally live. If uh, if you're wanting just a straight deck list, you can go online. But I want to do everything live and natural. This is me. This is what you see. This is what you get. It's just two hands. There's no body back here. Uh, just these little hands going through all this stuff. But uh, anyways, guys, if you really appreciate this and you like the videos and everything, give me a like, send me a comment. Um, what's something else you guys would like to see unboxings of? Um, is there something else out there that uh, really piques your interest? Now, um, subscribe because I do plan on doing a box opening of Eldraine, a bundle opening of Eldraine. I'm going to do all the Brawl decks. 
Um, so stay tuned for those. I think they're going to be really interesting. Um, and then we're also going to do um, this special pack that's coming out. Um, I'm not going to get a whole box. I'm just going to get one pack. Uh, we're going to do special pack openings for it. So stick around if you really are interested in seeing those. Um, and give me some comments down there. What do you guys like? What do you guys think I can improve on? Um, just guys let me know. Okay? And I appreciate you watching the videos.